Today I'm going to give you a taste of how brilliant your brain is. And my goal is to physically change every single one of your brains. Like actually physically change it. But how? I'm not going to open your skull and reach into your head because that is illegal and I am not a neurosurgeon. So how does this organ in our brain change every single day? In the packages you've received today, you've all gotten a pen and a paper. I'd like you to pull those out. I want each of you to think of a game or a hobby or an activity or a skill, something that you like to do, something you've been doing for a long time and something that you're good at. But maybe you're stuck. Your progression has slowed down. You've lost motivation. Maybe you can't get to that next level of the video game. Maybe you can't learn that new song on the instrument that you play. Think of this skill, think of this hobby, and write it down. We'll come back to it. So neuroscience is changing and advancing every single day. So our understanding of the brain is also changing every day, much like our actual brains are. So it's a very exciting time to be a neuroscientist, because it turns out we don't actually know that much about the brain. And what we do know often turns out to be wrong, or at least incomplete. One of the first things we learn in neuroscience is just how brilliant each and every single one of your brains are. As a human being, you have the largest brain-to-body ratio of any animal on Earth. You have the most complex brain of every creature that we've ever discovered. Scientists estimate that each and every one of you have 100 billion brain cells, or neurons, in each of your brains. And these neurons carry information from one part of your brain to the other in the form of electrical impulses and chemical signals. Now, we used to think that you were born with the same number of neurons that you were going to have for the rest of your life. The same neurons that you were going to one day die with. But recently, scientists are discovering that neurogenesis, or the regeneration of neurons, is in fact possible, and may be occurring in every single one of us, every single day. We used to also think that during childhood, our brains are developing and growing and expanding. We're building new connections, we're learning. But at a certain point in time, all of that stops. And from then on, you only see negative changes, exclusively connections being lost, your brain slowing down, your memory getting worse. Well, it turns out that not only were we wrong, but we were embarrassingly wrong. Your brain is building new connections every single day. With every fact, every skill, every new experience, you are rewiring your brain. In fact, you may not have noticed this, but right now, you are each rewiring your brain. So, how? How am I changing my brain right now? And how can I take advantage of this superpower? So your brain is quite a large and densely packed organ. It takes up 2% of your body weight and makes up 20% of all the calories that you eat on a daily basis. And we can pretty confidently say that all your thoughts, your emotions, your movement originate from the brain. So with time and with a lot of different methods, Neuroscientists, neurologists, psychologists, psychiatrists have begun to associate different parts of the brain with specific functions. So while your whole brain works together, your brain also has specific roles allocated to different parts. Things like language, memory, motor abilities, even facial recognition. So our brain's ability to grow is called neuroplasticity, and this is our topic today. Neuro 
referring to the neurons in your head, and plasticity, meaning malleable, its ability to change. So when we learn, we're building new connections. We are actively creating larger networks in our brain. And that's why we can take learning and training to be the basis of neuroplasticity. So why? Why would I actively change my brain? I'm learning something new pretty much every day. I'm experiencing new things every day. Why would I want to actively change my brain if it's changing anyway? Well, the more you engage and encourage growth in your brain, the faster you will become in your daily life. You'll improve your general processing speed the more you take advantage of your brain's ability to change the better your memory will become. You'll be sharper, faster. You'll have fewer failures in reasoning. But the most important thing about harnessing our brain's ability to change and develop is you can maintain a healthy brain as you age. Those negative changes that your brain goes through when you become an adult, you can combat them if you actively challenge yourself and engage the brain. How am I going to do this, right? How do I actively change my brain? And is it really as simple as just learning a new fact every day? Is it that easy? Raise your hand if this is your first ever TEDx event. It's mine too. Now raise your hand if you've learned something today at all. A good way to start is to avoid the easy way. So today, on your way home from work, or on your way home from this event, don't use your GPS. Rely on your navigational skills and what you know about the city that you're in. The next time you need to calculate something, reach for a pen and a paper, or better yet, do it in your head. Now I know what you're thinking. I live in a fast-paced world, and I don't have time to get lost on my way home from work every single day. I don't have time to divide 300 by 7 when I can very easily reach for my phone and do it in a matter of seconds. And to that I say, make the time. Multitask. Imagine counting your reps at the gym while you work out. Your brain has the ability to allocate attention to more than one thing at once. Change your daily routine. Trust yourself and trust your brain. Raise your hand if you just tried to divide 300 by 7. Yeah? If you haven't, try it out. This is how you can challenge your brain. Now, these are some simple challenges that you can do every day. But there are other simple challenges too, like drawing with your non-dominant hand and practicing it regularly, or learning a new word every single day. Practice thinking creatively. Let me give you an example. My cousins, when they're stuck in traffic, they like to pick out license plates and divide them over and over again until they find out which ones are prime numbers. Prime numbers meaning can only be divided by themselves and one. Now there are some easy indicators. Numbers that end with one, three, seven, and nine are more likely to be prime numbers. But still, my cousins have to take these eight-digit license plates and divide them over and over and over until they're sure. This is an excellent example of thinking creatively. You are stimulating your mind, challenging and engaging your brain while you're just passing the time stuck in traffic. So, targeting your mental and physical functions that you're weak at can have profound positive impacts on your mind. It's kind of like training a muscle. When you're stimulating the same pathways, you're bound to see improvement. Small challenges lead to big, big changes, especially when they're done with mindfulness and consistency. And your brain works together as a whole. 
So improving a cognitive function in one area will contribute to all the other complex processing occurring in your brain. I'm going to give you a personal example. I recently started practicing traditional Palestinian and Syrian embroidery. Now, besides the deeper appreciation for my culture and my heritage, I've also been seeing a number of positive, positive mental impacts. So by repeating the same pattern and the same sequences every day with my hands, I'm improving my visuospatial abilities. When I feel the fabric between my fingers and I know where to place my needle, I'm improving my fine motor skills, my hand-eye coordination, learning new patterns and knowing their meanings means I am actively building new connections, especially when I know that I'm going to have that information with me for the rest of my life. And repeating this pattern every single day, when I'm doing different images, different symbols, with different complexity, allows me to activate those pathways over and over again, solidifying them in my brain, producing structural changes. So I've improved my general processing speed, my attention, my creative problem solving, but more than everything, I've improved my working memory, my ability to hold more than one thing in my mind at the same time. I have to remember the pattern I'm gonna be stitching while counting the number of stitches, placing my needle in the right place, and actually stitching a smaller version of that pattern on a piece of cloth. So, Consistently activating your brain is a fantastic way of challenging yourself. But another way to grow your brain is to try new things. So neuro neuroplasticity can range from very effortful activities to very simple activities. It can range from learning a new language, a new instrument, visiting a new city to visiting a new part of the city you live in that you've never been to before. Cooking new food, listening to new music, expanding your vocabulary are all examples of challenges that will promote neuroplasticity within your brain. So what did we learn here today? Simple activities and challenges can lead to big changes when they're done with consistency and with mindfulness. Each of these tasks can help you get faster, sharper, smarter, especially if you try to do them every day. You can't change your brain if you stay in your comfort zone. But the key the key to neuroplasticity and maintaining a healthy brain as you age is consistently challenging yourself. So in the beginning of the talk, I asked each and every one of you to think of a hobby or a skill or an activity that you enjoy doing, but you're stuck at. I have three words for you. Consistency, not repetition. If you want to get better at that game, put it down and play another game. If you want to learn that new song, put down that song and learn a different one. Then come back to it with fresh eyes and a new perspective. I guarantee you will get to that next step. If I play Sudoku every single day, I'm only ever going to get better at Sudoku. And eventually, I'm going to get stuck. But if I also practice mental math in different ways, like picking out prime numbers of license plates, then I'm not going to get stuck at Sudoku, and I've improved my mental abilities. So challenge yourself. Wake up every day and do something scary. Do something uncomfortable. Do something new, like coming to a TEDx event. This is how I can guarantee that you will wake up tomorrow with a different brain than you woke up with today. Thank you.